नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू द ब्राह्मणी अकेडमी सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द फॉरेन ट्रेड पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया दिस इज अ न्यू थिंग दैट इज एडेड इन द प्रिलिम सिलेबस ऑफ एम बी पी एस सी इफ यू आर वॉचिंग इट लाइव दिस लेक्चर इज गोइंग टू बी लिंदी एंड इफ यू आर वॉचिंग इट रिकॉर्डेड वन ऑब्वियसली यू ऑलरेडी नो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अ बिगर लेक्चर सो विथाउट वेस्टिंग एनी टाइम लेट स्टार्ट इट द बेसिक थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस पोर्शन इज फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया Uh, understand this thing india such a vast country almost the most populous nation so we need to study what exactly we people do so as to survive in this competitive world what are our exports like what do we export and rest of these things that is why mppsc has added this under the economic section itself the indian foreign trade policy here and it is not just policy it is policies remember the plural form so we are going to look at each and everything that is pretty possible from this aspect and hopefully the questions will also appear in your prelims examination so without wasting a time let's move forward so see the basic thing what is foreign trade policy see every year what our government does is take on different different notions different ideas and data these sets are been compiled by ministry of commerce and industries the industry uh, the uh, the ministry in charge commerce and industries as of now who is the minister in charge of this thing he is piyush goyal he is the person in charge so piyush goyal mr piyush goyal he is our minister of commerce and industries the person who gives is dgft director general of foreign trade hopefully you people too can one day achieve these sort of ranks so without wasting our time so he is the person dgft is the one who tells you about this foreign trade policy and it is from the ministry of commerce and industries and the foreign trade policy the last foreign trade policy that came in front of us was to th from 2015 to 2020 it was extended to two more years and then the final year this the new foreign trade policy that we are going to study is ftp now the word i am going to use is foreign trade policy 2023 earlier it was from 15 to 20 but it was extended to three more years uh, like year by year the reason was covid you people already know that this was the time when covid hit us so we extended the foreign trade policy now let's get to the background where it all started uh, the year was twelfth april 1985 it was uh, rajiv gandhi ji government and uh, this was his government and the minister uh, i'm talking here was vp singh who later on gets to become the prime minister of india also uh, close to 98 and he was the one who has flashed uh, rajiv gandhi's career also in the bofors scam that was there uh, he is mr clean as people say but nevertheless so mr clean what he does was he brings out a policy that was said to be exim this was the first time this policy was there and this was on the foreign trade document that was initially act passed back in i guess uh, 50 Seven, yes, fifty-seven. So he brings a policy which is known as import, export, import, export, import policy. This export import policy or the exim policy, it was said so. He bought it for three years initially for three years. for 3 years this policy was been brought up now what it was written that uh, we as the people we are trying to get our foreign exchange high or in short form what we call it is forex reserves f o r e x forex that is foreign exchange reserves 
so we wanted to get these foreign exchange reserves in quite good amount so that we can have our safety net that safety net of procuring different things from uh, other world like uh, we wanted pharmaceutical things we wanted crude oil and everything so we wanted to expand this foreign reserves forex reserves like as of now in india the forex reserves have uh, breached 600 billion dollars yes billion dollars earlier it was pretty like even under 100 less than that it was less than that but as of now we are in here 100 also i'm saying no much less than 50 it was what we brought this exam policy that is export import policy this was the starting of foreign trade policy earlier to this 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 important it is important to understand earlier to this what india does did was import substitution Achha, what is import substitution you people always knew this thing that india when it became a free country after the colonial loot from britishers in 1947 we opted for a government which was sort of mixed but more of government controlled government controlled economy we did not open up our market and that was quite understandable because we were a naive country, a newborn and infant country and we didn't want other people to come in and start looting us again as the last experience was with Britishers and that was surely petrifying in nature. So we wanted a safeguard and even Mahatma Gandhi ji he himself said that we should make self-sufficient villages rather than try to open our society or try to open up our country similarly pandit jawaharlal nehru the flag bearer of gandhian philosophies and theories he also said we didn't want it he thought of uh, import substitution so what we did under this import substitution we tried to export only that amount which was necessary for us to import the amount that was needed for us to import things what all things we imported obviously crude oil machineries and different machi uh, medical parts also or something sometimes medicines also we imported but for that what we opted for was just enough uh, import substitution what did we export we exported cattle to some extent we are not able to export vegetable or fruit because we didn't have the food security at that point of time we uh, even uh, exported few sort like we were based Based on remittances from uh, external countries and also support from external countries so that was all we wanted we didn't support export of our products because we wanted a closed economy so we didn't want export even exports to happen we just tried to maximize like if hundred dollars i'm just giving an example hundred dollars of import was done to this country what we thought we should only export close to hundred dollar or hundred and ten dollar just this nothing much so that our imports could be substituted from our exports okay so this what import substitution of from export itself this was the policy that went on uh, prime minister after prime minister it was only rajiv gandhi who thought no now the time has come we should open at least try to open our economy and we brought the first policy that is exam policy import exp export import policy in year 85 1985 and who was the minister in charge at that time vp singh who later on be uh, became the prime minister also and who was the uh, who was that who was the prime minister rajiv gandhi Okay, he was the prime minister and he was the chief minister. This first policy of the foreign trade policy was bought for how many years? Three years, as I have already said to you people. Now, later on, when new governments came, successive governments came, they also tried to do many other things. And um, then in 1998 to 2002, there was this foreign trade policy. Then from 2002 to 2007 a new foreign trade policy was there but we all know in 2004 there was change in government a new government was in the power which was Manmohan Singh's G government that is UPA correct UPA one what they did is change the name of exim this exim name was changed to FTA uh, foreign trade FTPs so the year was 2004 when exim policy was changed to foreign trade policy and whose government was it or who was the prime minister at that time it was 
Dr. Manmohan Singh. So till now, I guess you people have understood what exactly these things are. And after that, from so this was even corrected. This this was changed to 2004, so 2009, and then later from 2009 to 2000. 14 was there and the sonnet catapulted then 2015 to 2020 which went on to 2023 and this new foreign trade policy that we are going to learn is 2023 this is the one we are going to learn this was the history portion of foreign trade policy i believe you people must have understood till now let's move forward getting on yes so till now, so uh, the department which is in charge of bringing foreign trade policy is department of uh, the Ministry of Commerce and Industries, foreign trade the department is and uh, uh, the director general is known as DGFT, director general of foreign trade. He is the one who is in charge of bringing it. The last foreign trade policy was 15 to 20, I told you, which uh, was extended to three more years. The new foreign trade policy that we people are going to study is foreign trade policy 2023. Moving on. So these are the more four, uh, most four important things which you will find in foreign trade policy 2023. From incentives, we have gone to remission. I'm going to explain you what are incentives. Then I'm going to explain you what are remissions. Hold your breath. Next is export promotion through collaboration. Easy words, but there's an entangled meaning behind it. Export promotion, easy thing, we need to promote the export, but through collaboration, how do we get this collaboration? Again, we find references in foreign trade policy. I'm going to explain you this too. Next is ease of doing business, not a term that you people haven't heard already. Ease of doing business, to do business, which could be easily done, then what all governments are doing for this thing. This is again, I'm going to explain you, and this is again a pillar, I must say, and emerging areas. These are the different areas where government is trying to focus, trying to maximize and capitalize so that India could proceed for a net Amrit Kal. See, this foreign trade policy has four pillars. One, two, three, and four. These are the four pillars. Now, what's the story behind these four pillars? Let's understand. FTP 2023. Remember, we are in Amrit Kal, correct? In Amrit Kal, the Amrit Yuga is there. And by 2047, as Prime Minister has already told us, we want to become a developed nation, correct? For, being, uh, for becoming a developed nation, we need to aspire more, we need to work hard, we need to achieve more. And for that itself, this foreign trade policy has come into segments. So now this thing, for uh, achieving these things, we looked at the four important things that are from uh, the incentives, the promotion through collaboration, ease of doing business and emerging areas. In the similar aspect, what next was done, we tried to optimize maximum from it. Let's talk, uh, let's talk about the independent things which are here in these policies, the foreign trade policy. Other than those pillars, the four important pillars, the keywords which are there. See, duration. Why this duration? Understand. In our foreign trade policy, for duration, earlier you saw the last foreign trade policy was from 2015 to 2020. Although it was extended to three more years, that is till 2023, that is 22 itself, but 23 tended, so three more years. But the duration for this foreign trade policy, it isn't given to us. Until now, what happened, there was a fixed duration with it. This time it has come with no sunset clause. What does this mean, no sunset clause? This is a term essentially used in economics and has been used many a times. You people will get to know about, you people will hear about this term quite often. So please understand. The sunset clause means anything that will expire by this time. If there is a sunset clause, let's say there was this uh, uh, commission which used to look into the segments, uh, competition commission, let's say. What competition example it's just an example there is a commission said as competition commission when it was formed it was said this will be there for three years 
so three years so after three years you need not to have any act passed by the parliament it will by itself get dissolved that is after three years it will be all sunset this is sunset clause it will be over by three years if there is already a thing which is written in the document the uh, in instructions that already after three years this complete uh, uh, commission will get dissolved automatically that is known as sunset clause so if any policy that has a time frame or time period 20 it was for five years it must have been dissolved unless and until you extend it but here in the new the duration is said to be with no sunset clause that is government has said we haven't brought in any sunset clause it won't expire by itself we will from time to time amend on recommendations so amend on recommendations so this way the duration has been extended see we want to keep it flexible we don't want to keep it agile that it has to be stubborn no we wanted to make things happen easily and also we wanted it for to last long now uh, let me draw your attention to the history chapters do you remember permanent settlement system system this was bought by Cornwallis, correct? Now what Cornwallis said, he brought this permanent settlement system so that he could fix the tax rate and these tax rates when fixed, other people could think of long term perspective because they don't need to have this changed regularly. Similarly, what government wants is, we want to fix this foreign trade policy for longer term. So the, uh, the what or the confidence of exporters will be more because they know these policies won't change overnight it will be gradually changed if ever changed or else it won't be changed so that is why government has put this no sunset clause ensuring the trust and competition uh, the trust and confidence of those exporters who want to export those products to different different parts of the world that is why for duration what we say there is no sunset clause so the first thing the duration part is there now again dynamism See, dynamic being dynamic, what you know, to change accordingly. You're not static, na. you don't wait for things. You are not like, na, I'm stubborn, I'm just going to stay here. No, you're like a flowing river rather than being a pond, a stagnant water. You are not stagnant. You are free flowing. Free flowing for the benefit of ourselves not for the benefit of others. So exporters, if they find something which is beneficial for them, it could be adjusted in the foreign trade policy that gives the perspective of dynamism. For duration, I said to you, there is no sunset clause, so it's going to be length, it's going for a long life now. So duration and dynamism, uh, we are not going to stop anything. We are not going to be orthodox here in our approach. We are going to be free flowing, a liberal mindset that is dynamism. Decentralization, here, this word is very important. Decentralization, often we talk about power correct like the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment was there this constitutional amendment was just for decentralization of power itself na? where we had panchayati raj institutions and those municipalities correct so similarly what we want now in this foreign trade policy also we want a decentralization. I'm going to explain you in the further slide so just keep this thing in mind we have worked on decentralization also in this approach I think now next is direction obviously our direction is forward looking to 2047 where we want our country to be a developed country for that the direction is also there next is disaster proof see disaster here is are not just about the natural disasters disasters could be any like uh, when we started importing oil that is crude oil from russia what happened is that uh, russian crude oil need, uh, needed some sort of insurance that insurance factor is always there so all those imports which are being done in international waters they are being insured that if anything happens to this who is going to pay the insurance price is also there everyone refused to insure russian uh, sheeps and everything. So what uh, India did that we started a company of our own, this proofing company of our own, this aspect. So we wanted our foreign trade to be proof of all these factors also, be their conflicts, be their want. Uh, war we want to stay neutral we want to stay up ahead we want to progress that is why we are making it sure the disaster proofing is done for this foreign trade policy also we have these details so we are creating 
a system an enabling system an easy system wherein just at the point of switch on the mobile itself you people could always and understandably do this portion so that our india could proceed and progress so these are the important duration dynamism decentralization direction and disaster proving and see ever since prime minister modi has come to the power the best thing or the most important part of his policies are acronyms he is quite famous in using acronyms uh, recently when he was to america this i have given example earlier also he said ai there say i like artificial intelligence growing but then he said there is a relation of india and america also so america and indian relationship that is also growing similarly pm mitra scheme as we are talking about um, these initiatives in economics you must have learned pm mitra by now correct many parks are to be opened here of pm mitra in fact in madhya pradesh also pm mitra parks are to be opened so in that also farm to factory to fabric and farm to fabric and everything is there so f f f f f prime minister modi has just given these notations and connotations also so these are d duration dynamism decentralization direction and disaster proofing moving on goals and targets it is very important to understand what government has set what government has thought and what government thinks about it india wants to promote more india wants to export more and for that it is very important for us to understand this thing in this segment itself as of now india is exporting somewhere close to uh, 700 or 800 billion dollars is the annual export that we exported last year but what we are aspiring is to achieve an export of 2 billion yes 2 trillion sorry 2 trillion dollars export worth by 2020 30 this includes merchandise as well as services export so this is our aim usd 2 trillion dollar by 20 and this equal contribution 2 trillion 1 trillion from goods and 1 trillion from services so equal contribution is to be from merchandise which are goods and one from service sector this is what we are aspiring for we want to make indian currency strong we want to rely on these cross border trades see uh, recently there was a video been posted by a singer if i'm not wrong he was mika singh he was in doha qatar and he said that now at airports and in doha you can use indian currency you can pay for merchandise what you are purchasing in indian currency what is this international internationalization of rupees in sri lanka you can pay using indian rupee bangladesh is accepting payment in indian rupees uae united arab emirates is accepting payment in rupees indian rupees and we are accepting payments in their your uh, currency so this is what is known as internationalization of rupee by this the initiative what we are trying to ensure is internationalization of rupee so that it could be used more asked more when there is demand for indian rupee value for indian rupee will increase this will help the complete indian society indian economy in many aspects so this is again a topic that people want to see indian currency cross border trade moving forward uh, the next thing that's important to understand is we want to make india global currency see as of now the few global currencies are dollar which is the most prominently used like close to 80% of uh, international trade that happens is in dollar itself uh, then is rmb which is chinese currency or chinese yuan they say they say then yen japanese yen we also have euro what we also have is uh, pound sterling so this is also there but what we want is to make indian rupee a global currency now see different countries have even started accepting indian rupee as a legal tender uh, not exactly in their country but in this way uh, let's take example of uae uae has started taking payments in indian rupee uh, bangladesh is there sri lanka is there many of our neighboring state like nepal was always there so we are trying to maximize this thing russia and india are having international trade in it so this portion and this proportionate portion is also getting high we want to assure this factor itself that is rupee as a global currency and make india a trade hub unless and until the huge population we have unless and until we try to harvest that population and this harvesting could only be done if we try to transform it from agriculture based to technology based or the manufacturing based and for that we need to exchange this thing this is making india transport hub so it is again an important part of our foreign trade policy moving on 
see this uh, I, as i told you what we aspire is to give our exports to 2 billion 2 trillion sorry 2 trillion dollar by 2013 the last year's export the 22 23 the data was close to 800 billion dollar just understand the nominal gdp of pakistan a gibberish state uh, is close just 350 billion dollars it is even lesser than what our tata group holds uh, complete tata group and the valuation of tata group so it is even lesser than that and what they want uh, the gdp the, what they want is to get into g20 also that is again hilarious nevertheless this is what we aspire and we want it to be achieved in uh, this one two trillion we want it to be achieved in 2023 i believe we will be able to achieve this fleet quite early itself because the way we are in the the progress we are having uh, the last when we were in like close to 450 billion it was 2013 and 14 from there we have jumped to almost 800 almost like uh, close to double so this way now this is the data of uh, state wise data the state which is exporting the most and then the least it is again an important data so please keep this thing in mind here you don't see madhya pradesh quite saddening this hurting also but nevertheless other states of our country are doing good madhya pradesh should also do good in it the the best state in export is gujarat then second is maharashtra third is tamil nadu uh, giant the powerhouse the economic giant is tamil nadu and then fourth is karnataka it has expanded a lot and the fifth this is quite a new entry see here uttar pradesh uttar pradesh has started exporting quite a lot Although compared to its population, it is still less and still lagging. But they aspire to become the first one trillion dollar economy very soon, very early. And they are trying to contribute like when India would be five trillion economy, they want themselves to be one trillion economy. So this is again their aspiration, which obviously, hopefully, we fill it up. And Madhya Pradesh also like to see it in the higher rank. So please remember top five, which are important. Uh, these are important, could be asked. Moving on, in the first page itself, I have told you there are four pillars of our foreign trade policy, which is foreign trade policy 2023. In that first pillar is incentive to remission. First pillar itself is incentive to remission. What are incentives? What are remissions? Let's understand this first. See, when I talk about incentives, To give something, Achha, you all, I like to take you back to the childhood era when uh, your father or your mother or your parents must have asked you to, to, do, to do something and in reward they must have said you I will bring you this thing or that thing or X thing. They, the, the important thing or the best thing they used to ask was good marks, correct? And in reward, what they used to give you? Something gift? Those gifts were what I got a gift was yo-yo or uh, like a bicycle could be a gift, video games could be a gift, other games or some sweets could be a gift, chocolates could be a gift, but this was a gift, I got it. Many of you must have played it even. So these are the things. So when you get good marks, this is the cause or the outcome and what you are awarded for this are the rewards. These rewards are nothing but incentives. Getting it? Similarly, in an economy, what do we want? We want our exporters to export more. When they do so, what we try to give them is incentive. So in export, the, uh, the cause or, uh, should be export, not just export, but more export. And for that, what do we want to give them? Incentives. Just, get, uh, just understand an example, if I want an exporter to export of $100, $100 worth of export he is exporting, I will give him $10 as incentives. If he does more, that is one more 100 is added by him, I will add one more $10 to his incentives. Now see, if the cost of manufacture or cost of production for this $100 export is $92, initially he will be making or minting $8 profit. Correct? But if I give him $10 of incentive, he will be making at least $18 of profit. 
is not 18 dollars he can try to reduce this thing and make it more competitive in the market so more selling would be there due to this more selling more of export he will perform and due to this more export he will get more of the incentive also so here he is getting benefit from exporting more this is what is known as export uh, incentive scheme so when in export regime what we used to do provide incentive for the export they do more the export they do more the incentive they are being provided this is how it used to ripe for us this is how it used to be beneficial for us so in this way we try to do it but what happened is in the later portion understand this thing the year was 2011 in WTO there was an agreement signed. WTO is World Trade Organization. India is also a part of WTO. Uh, let me uh, just tell me which is the year WTO was formed. In this world, SCM was there, an ag agreement. Subsidy and countervailing measure. So in subsidy and countervailing measure, what it was said that any country whose per capita income is more than $1,000 for last three years can't give incentives on export. This is what they said. If any country whose per capita income is more than $1,000 per year for last three consecutive years, consecutive years, they can't give incentives on export. India in 2013, our per capita income, income of India became more than $1,000. So now, after three years, we came out of, we came in this condition. Now we were not allowed to give incentives that we wanted to give our exporters and incentives were given under the scheme is M-E-I-S. This was the scheme name. Full form is Merchandise Export of India scheme under this scheme MEIS scheme we used to give uh, uh, incentives to our exporters but due to this agreement WTO's agreement which was signed in 2011 the agreement name is SCM which is subsidy and countervailing measure what was done in 2000 uh, uh, that if the per capita income of a country is more than thousand dollars for the last three consecutive years it cannot give export incentives now we were asked uh, by USA what USA did we used to give these incentives so USA took us to appellate tribunal of WTO which is known as dispute settlement body DSB dispute settlement body of WTO there they filed a case against us now what this case was this the this case the tribunal gave verdict against India and asked us to withdraw this thing so we had to withdraw this MEIS scheme or at least change it for initially in the last uh, foreign trade policy which was from 20 15 to 2020 which I have already told you people MEI scheme was there so we had to change it and in the new policy we had to take it out because we would be violating this principle of WTO so for this reason itself from incentive based we went to remission based you see this thing from incentive based what did we do we went on we went on to the remission based from incentive waste, we went on to the remission waste. Now, what is this remission? Understand the meaning of remission is to leave. What is this to leave? Understand there is a scheme named R O D T E P. Initially, it was M E I S, which you people understood in the last slide, which is Merchandise Export of India scheme. Now, next is R O D T E P. The full form is remission of duty and taxes please read it from yourself remission of duty and taxes on in export products so this is the name of scheme rodtep under this scheme what happened is 
Now see understand. I want to make a marker. Correct? This is the marker. I will obviously require water. At some point of time, I will also require electricity. What will I also require? I'll require petroleum product. Correct all of these things. They all have inbuilt tax. That is tax inside them, inside them. Now these taxes, what they do? These are not, uh, they don't come under GST. Correct or not? For GST, if you are an exporter, you get input tax credit. What do you get? Input tax credit. Correct or not? Yes. So what is input tax credit? Like uh, from state like Karnataka, if you have asked something to come to Madhya Pradesh, they are costing two to three states. Now in every state, there will be some tax collected. Those tax could be credited back to you and this is known as input tax credit. This could be shown in your GSTN. Okay, GSTN network, that is GST network. This could be shown and you can claim it, but this was income tax credit. But in some, where these taxes are not, which are not included in GST, water, electricity, petroleum, products, these are not under GSTs. So there are taxes also. What government is saying, whatsoever tax you have filed, you can get tax credit for it. And this tax credit could be remitted, which is either it could be reduced or eliminated so these taxes which were to be taken from you could be reduced or it could be eliminated this is the meaning of remission so prior to 2013 what could we do or prior to 2016 what we did were giving give incentives now what we did was in place of incentives what did we do remissions so this is the first theme from us that is incentive went on to remission incentive was MEIS next was remission remission is RODTEP remission on duty and taxes on export products you understood it exactly now second is ROSCTL this is for textile this textile portion what do you find in textile one this is given by ministry of textile just remember this thing, ROSCTL, if you could remember the exact line, which is remission of state and center taxes and levies. This is from uh, for textile. This and this are same, completely same. These are for different products which are manufactured or different merchandises. And this is for textile or apparels. Textiles means this is textile, uh, like cotton is there, yarn is there, blankets are there. These are all textiles. So for that, we have Ministry of Textile giving out the same scheme, which is known as ROSCTL, Remission of State and Center Taxes and Levy. The next is EPCG scheme. Please understand what is this. <coughs> now see. EP is for Export Promotion. And CG is for Capital Goods. So export promotion of capital goods. This is the scheme name. Now see what is what are capital goods? There are two types of goods. One is capital goods, and then the second is capital goods. Second is consumer goods. Okay. Now what are consumer goods and capital goods? Understand if there is a machine, that machine is there to make this marker. Let's say a machine. Now machine is making marker or say biscuits, correct? So that machine when it is used so as to make different product, which product could be used from an end consumer point perspective. See, I'm a consumer, I'm using this marker. So this marker is said to be a consumer good. What it is? Consumer good because I'm using it. This is the end product. But this machine is not the end product. This machine is used to make some sort of thing, which is either marker or biscuit. So this is capital. Capital means investment. So this investment thing or that investment good is being used to make a good which could be consumer or consumed. 
so this machine is a capital goods whereas these biscuits or marker all the consumable goods so these are consumed goods or consumer goods understand it's easy simple and delicate to understand but please keep this thing in your mind capital goods are those machines which are needed to uh, make new things which are needed to make the consumer goods and the consumer goods are the goods which are consumed by the end consumer like me you and each and every one so these are so what happened in epcg scheme now please understand this uh for making any for making this marker i need a machine that machine is to be imported from foreign countries it might be their part or something like a complete machine could be imported if i import this government puts in import duty okay there is import duty by government what is this import duty sort of tax nothing else correct so it is tax that is by government let's say this is a 100 dollar machine on that 10 dollars of import duty is there what government says under epcg scheme i am ready to give away this 10 dollar i don't want 10 dollars of your import duty but there is a condition the condition is in coming 6 years you need to at least 6 times that is 10 into 6 which is 60 dollars you need to export in 6 years you need to find a way you how the way uh, that way should be you need to export 60 dollars worth of export in coming 6 year if you are able to do so using this machine i'm going to i'm ready to let off these 10 dollars which are you have to give now on import duties if you are able to do this thing so this is export promotion on capital goods scheme now what is government trying to achieve by this understand if 10 dollars are left it would be easy for me now 10 dollars is a small amount but i am just taking a simple example the machines they are importing cost in crores and if the 10% is import duty just think if it was 1 uh, crore then it would be 10 lakh of the duty that is going to be given so in place what government says now export of 60 lakhs and that 60 lakhs when converted to dollar will reap amount that will help in enhancing or increasing forex which is foreign exchange if foreign exchange increases the value of rupee will increase and this will give more of the help to the government and the country itself so in this way what government is trying to ensure these are the three schemes which are from incentives earlier we used to give meis scheme wherein we used to give incentives to them now we have gone to remission where we are trying to leave it reduce all of these things so please keep these things in mind so these three schemes are important just keep their name you need not to like get into all the understandings important part is rodtp remission of duty and taxes for ex on export products second or roscl remission on state and center taxes and levies epcg export promotion of capital goods scheme so these are from incentives to remission where we first used to give away money as incentives now we are trying to reduce the taxes we are trying to eliminate the taxes so this is the first pillar of our foreign trade policy 2023 this is what it was here here itself which was been explained to you the next is through collaboration see understand nothing in this earth is possible without collaboration we need to extend and when it is business business is all about collaborating with each other now what we are trying to do is in case of up like bottom to top uh, from top to bottom we are trying to reach from bottom to top see initially what happened happens is we have a district district is in state now what state is in country and now country is related to the world so now from district to state it will go state to country and then country to obviously the world so we are collaborating those exporters first anyone who is trying to export is an exporter exporter will go to district district indeed will go to state A state will go to the country and then to the indian missions that is abroad indian missions are what these are embassies and consulates so um, uh, by uh, using embassies and consulates they are trying to do and how exactly they are trying to do in the next slides i'm going to tell you people now the third one ease of doing business uh, do you remember back in 2020 world bank 
used to bring out a report which was called ease of doing business itself in ease of doing business what used to happen was uh, people used to, uh, they used to give ranking of different different countries how easy it is to do business there the last ranking if i'm not wrong i remember it correctly it is either 44 or 42 uh, do let me know in the comment section what was the last ranking of india in this ranking in 2020 they found some discrepancy in the data given by china after that they stopped bringing out these reports so this ease of doing business but india is still wants to make and uh, make business into easy that is why we see different sort of application which are being developed loan in 59 minutes all online approval in like in by a click away with all those approval that is there so all these things are there now see emerging areas in 19th century who had the technology it was UK they had the technology best technology about industrialization so they ruled the world in the 20th century best technology was with america so they ruled the world and 21st century is said to be the century asian century so we are thriving and striving for the new technologies emerging technologies and similarly it is visible in our foreign trade policy also so we are trying to work on new that is e-commerce then iot that is internet of things and these different different sort of now i'm going to complete in detail all of these three we are going as we have completed the first one in the next lecture also till then take care